So the um, I know you can't really well it's, you can't really see what's up here, but that's why I have it in the handouts. Conceptually, this model tries to do a lot in a short amount of time. The, 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 it's a bouncing ball, and the, the point the points where the ball starts and where it ends are the points of possibility. When a team is starting or when it's renewing, anything's possible. But when a team is deep into its constraints, uh, the limits of what it can do in a particular situation, that's where the literally the rubber of the ball hits the road. So the model is possibility at the top, constraint at the bottom. But the constraint actually powers the team forward. I'm a big believer that constraints actually uh, free teams, they don't limit teams, because human ingenuity is boundless, and that once you find the constraints, you release that ingenuity. So um, I, I don't accept anyone who says, we don't, you know, we're, too, we're constrained, that's a limit. We're constrained, correct, that allows us to focus. So there's a, a, a developmental focus going from left to right, there's possibility constraint going from top to bottom, and other than that, you know, the model, it is generally developmental, but the reality of human teams is much more complex than that. You sort of go through this process, but, but one of the questions I got is, what happens when you get a new team member? Well, a new team member means you go back to building trust with some new folks, or orienting that person, why am I here? So it's, it's linear and, it, and it's not both at the same time. Now, for some of you have been hanging around team trainings, you may have heard another model, which is easier to remember, that tracks this. It's form, storm, norm, perform, and then I like to add transform. So it's tracking um, the forming, which is orientation, the storming, which is the trust, the norming, which is goals, roles, commitment, the performing is implementation, high performance, the transforming is renewal. So, you may remember that more than the bouncing ball, but uh, it, it's, it's just a reminder that the wisdom in this model is, is widely recognized. So uh, let me go through uh, the model briefly, and then we'll go back through it more intensively, uh, just to kind of get more oriented to it. So in the forming stage, the key question is, why am I here? And what you see in the model is, where it says resolved, if the if this stage is, is being handled to the satisfaction of folks, you see people with a sense of purpose, you see people who fit, and people feel like they belong. If it hasn't been handled, people are disoriented, they're uncertain, and they're fear, fearful. So you can use the model diagnostically to say, I'm seeing these symptoms. What does that tell me about where the team is at? But, uh, but this is a key, key point that particularly with new teams or when new members join teams, it's kind of like, who is everybody? Why are we here? What's going to happen then? So the trust building, it's integral in any model of team development. It's basically, who are you? Who am I in relationship with that? When it shows up as a, a well-developed uh, presence in a team, you have mutual regard, you have people who are, speak up, I mentioned that earlier, they're, they're forthright. And the dialogue is spontaneous. It's not guarded. Uh, when it's there isn't trust, uh, it's corrosive. Uh, it's scary. People are caution, cautionary. There's a, a, a facade, uh, and you wonder what the hidden agendas are. So this is, of course, a key a knot hole for any team to pass through. And that's why in the other model it's called storm, because it's sometimes not that pretty. Now. Uh, Goal and role, and two other, two other words that rhyme, are, are just the, the heartbeat of a team. It goes back to that definition. If you're clear on what your goals are, you're clear on what your roles are, so many of the questions that dog teams have been answered. And so when the assumptions are explicit, uh, people have their clear roles and goals, they're, they're ready to, to connect, which is the next stage. And if people aren't clear on this, you see apathy or, or disaffection. Okay, so then we get to the, the commitment in this model where you, you're face to face with these, these constraints, you, but you have a shared vision and a sense of how to approach it. Uh, the, the absence of that is either a dependence on a leader because you're not really committed, so you're waiting for someone to push you, or resistance. Uh, 
Resistance is the classic word that people uh, uh, use when describing uh, barriers to change, but often uh, resistance is a healthy indication that people have not clarified their goals yet, they're not clarified their goals, they're not trusting, they don't understand the need for change. Resistance is often a, a sign, just like when you have pain in the body, it's not necessarily a bad thing, it's telling you a little signal that your body needs some healing, needs some attention, needs some self-care. So resistance can be viewed from that perspective, not as a bad thing, but as a, a, a like a cry for help. I need a, I need better understanding of what's before I commit my precious life force. So we get into implementation, and this is the realm of management. You know, who does what, when, and where, and you're just you know systems, your processes, your disciplined execution. If you're if you made it through the trust stage. Uh, and they made it through the goals and roles, but you aren't really clear on implementation. This is where conflict can emerge again, and it needs to be resolved. So that's what's showing up on the unresolved side. Now, this is, of course, uh, the reason why we're all here is the high performance. And you can see it isn't something you stumble into, it's something you earn by doing all this other work. Um, and you hear metaphors from great teams in history and sports, you know. In, in politics, you know, where people are tuned in at an intuitive level, there's a synergy. Um, it, it, when it's good, it can be very, very good. Uh, but it's something that is uh, achieved through hard work. If your people, organization is being asked to do a tremendous amount and you don't have the supports for this, it can feel like over. And some of you, one of actually probably the most popular question I got was, how do you manage a team in crisis? We're, we're going to get to that, I promise. And then, of course, there's a renewal, which is where the team members leave. Maybe your 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 goal is accomplished. Um, uh, you uh, you finish a phase, and, and you and you have to re up, to recommit or depart or or repurpose. So all natural, healthy parts. Does this make sense intuitively? Head nodding. Yes.